Hey there, gentle people. It is Loy here, and psh, here's my face again. So I've been showing a lot of hands-on videos, uh, but it's been a minute since I saw you guys face to face. So uh, this is it today. I had planned to talk about something else, but then last night I started reading this book here. It is Creativity for Life by Dr. Eric Meisel. And Dr. Meisel, like Julia Cameron, has been a huge influence on me. He's considered America's most um, well-known, for want of a better word, creativity coach. And he's also a psychologist and an author. He's written a ton of books and his field of expertise is creativity. So obviously I'm paying some serious attention to him and I talked about Dr. Meisel in my podcast this week so I posted that on Monday so definitely check that out if you haven't as yet so here's the deal um it might be something that has come across in your own life before it's something that I experienced as recently as about a week ago week ago no seriously though about a week ago uh, but anyway, this is a question, right? Do you consider yourself an artist? And let me tell you, I've been asked that question so many times. And every time somebody asks me, I just kind of freeze. And I'm like, <laughs> literally, I'm like, uh, uh, because I just, that's not what I identified as, right? Um, as much as I consider myself as very creative person and I love art. I'm creating art. So it's it's deeper than, okay, I just appreciate art. I love the actual creation of it and the process and everything. And, you know, even though I'm out there doing stuff that's artistic and creative, like it was just not a label I had ascribed to myself. So there's so many times and so many people I've come across who are just like me where the minute somebody asks you that question, you kind of freeze and, you know, you're like, it's so easy for you to answer for anything else. But that question always brings up so much hesitation and, and concern and people don't outright say, you know, I'm an artist. And so I'm reading Dr. Meisel last night and it didn't even hit me until last night. This morning when I got up to do my pages throughout the process of writing, I'm like, hold up. I, I get it. I think I get it now. So in the book, Dr. Meisel talks about creativity from three different perspectives, right? He talks about creativity for life. And, you know, that creativity just means like you're an everyday creative. So you're creative just in the way you live your life, whether it means planning a menu for a dinner party or, you know, just in the way you approach your job. But you apply these very creative ideas just to your life in general that's an everyday creative person right so you're using things that a creative person would use like you know self-direction imagination resourcefulness that type of thing all right so that's your everyday creative and then the second type of creative person is somebody who aspires to live an art-filled life right so it's like art-filled living and what that means is you know that person loves music and literature and art and you know they love museums and galleries and concerts and they make an effort to integrate art into their life so while an everyday creative person might not be doing anything necessarily art related somebody who lives an art-filled life makes an effort to integrate the arts into their life on a regular basis, all right? So you're filling your days with art. And I know I definitely fall into that category because I, you know, the museum, the gallery thing has always been one of my absolutely favorite things to do ever since, you know, I was much, much younger. All right. So then here's the kicker. There's also no... uh person who is going to self-identify as an artist, right? Once you've made the decision to say, I am an artist, now you've kind of shifted. You've put a whole different level of meaning onto that. And, you know, as I was doing the morning pages, that was when I kind of made the connection because the minute you say, I'm an artist, that means that you've now decided to spend 
your life in pursuit devoted to this particular idea or you know whatever it is that your field is so whether that means that you're a musician or a writer or a dancer or a scientist because to me science is like one of the most amazing types of art so whatever it is that you've decided to devote your life to that's a lifetime commitment that's going to present a completely different set of challenges you've now said I'm going to be authentic about this. I'm going to devote my life to creating art in this particular way. So you're going to organize your life around this particular thing, right? And I think... That is where the hesitation comes in, why people don't necessarily want to say I'm an artist. And it was something that up until this morning, I was not intellectually aware of, right? It was something just you kind of feel in here like I don't want to call myself an artist. And like you don't even know why that is. But I think I think that might be the reason because somewhere inside, you know that the minute you utter those words, I am an artist, that you're now devoting yourself to that. That's a commitment. It's an actual commitment that you have to, to make. And, you know, if truth be told, I am not the commitment type. Like, anything having to do with any... Unless it's, like, some schoolwork or something. But, like, I don't commit myself to anything for any length of time because I don't want to feel, like, tied to any one thing. Which is the reason why I don't own a house at this point in my life. I'm like, whoa, no, that that's, like, forever. No, I can't do that. But anyway, so I think that's what it is. Um... I think that's where the hesitation comes from because now you've said this is the thing that gives meaning to my life. This is the thing that I'm going to commit to. This is the thing that I'm going to devote my time and my energy. I remember once you make a commitment to something, it's not no, I'm doing it today and tomorrow and that's the end of the story. That's like a, every day I'm dedicated to, to doing better at this and getting better at this. So... If you self-identify as an artist, that means that, okay, let me give you an example. You might be able to bake like the most amazing cake, right? That means, you know, like you incorporate baking into your life. That's art, right? So you're living this art-filled filled life. But the minute you decide, okay, you know what? I don't just want to bake awesome cakes. I want to go to cooking school and become a pastry chef. Then that's a whole different level of meaning because now you've devoted your life to crafting these desserts. You're not just doing it every every other day or every now and then, right? So Dr. Mizell talks about the fact that there is a difference between, you know, making soup and then deciding, you know what? I want to go and be a chef whole different thing. So again, you know, I think that's where a lot of the hesitation comes from. And a couple months ago, even though I'm still kind of uncomfortable, you know, answering that question for people, I made the conscious decision to, to identify as an artist. Um, and, you know, it's like, okay, like, that's what it is. Like, this is what, you know, I'm, I'm committing myself to. This is what, you know, I'm going to devote uh, my life to pursuing in terms of this is what adds value and meaning to my life so you know it's just something for you to think about um so that was it that was what i wanted to talk to you about oh and i wanted to share with you as well because you know i'm all about like the art supplies right um this is a watercolor <laughs> set i kind of like had a pause there it's a watercolor set from japan it's called um the brand is called kisho gansai and it's really really cool i mean look at those colors isn't that vibrant so a lot of times you'll just see things you know my clots <laughs> I just totally dropped that. So a lot of times you'll see things like this and you think to yourself, all right, it looks very vibrant in the package. You know, what does it look like on paper? So again, this is the Kisho Gansai and the package says Lumi Accent Color and I dropped, I dropped the orange. So it has Opera, Rose, Orange, Yellow, Light Orange and Pink and these are really really cool. I love them. So just to give you an idea, this is what they look like. Am I turning this thing upside down? Okay, yeah. So that's just basic. It's, this is just a watercolor block and then you know that's some gold leaf and masking fluid here and I got the watercolor block with the design on it Um, just because I wanted to see the construction. I just wanted to pull apart and kind of 
reverse engineer to see how they made this watercolor block but I decided to use it as an example to show you what the colors look like so you know the yellows and the oranges and the colors are very very vibrant so again that is the Kisho Gansai Lume accent color they're a watercolor from Japanese I mean watercolor from Japanese what kind of foolish is that anyway watercolor from Japan don't ask me what the mid this morning um and that's what they look like so anyway think about it the question for you is you know do you identify as an artist um you know have you given that particular meaning to your life and check out the looming colors from japan so people the website is up artofcreativeliving.com and this week's podcast is up i think i called it feel the fair and create anyway so it has a lot to do with you know how to manage creative anxiety so um let me know what you think um like subscribe you know, send me something in the comments. Uh, as usual, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your presence. Always, always, always. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you soon. Peace.